Hello class. Uh, today we are going to look at lesson number three, uh, which is going to be surface area. So this is going to be part one of two parts covering surface area. <clears throat> so surface area is chapter 4.10 on page 116 of your workbook. So we're skipping past chapter 4.8 and 4.9 uh, just because we don't have as much class time as we had before. And I want to cover kind of the most important concepts uh, and maybe the most interesting concepts. So surface area is neat because it's kind of a bridge between uh, two-dimensional shapes, we're looking at just area, and our three-dimensional shapes, where we'll look at volume. That's what we're going to do next. So looking at surface area, we're going to take a three-dimensional shape, and we're going to look at the area that each face of that three-dimensional shape makes up. So the best way to think about this is a cube. So a cube is just gonna be like a box you have in front of you. It's gonna have six sides. So if you look at the diagram I saw here, so we're gonna have a bottom and a top, and those are the sides that are labeled six and five, and we're gonna have four edge sides as well. So it's important to look at 3D shapes because we live in a 3D world. Everything we do is three-dimensional in some way. So in this uh, lesson, we're going to break down three-dimensional shapes into the area of its surfaces. So looking at this box, there's a couple ways to look at it. So first, we're going to look at the six sides. So I'm saying it's a cube, so each of the sides is going to be exactly the same. So each side length is two centimeters. That means that it's two centimeters across this way, it's two centimeters high this way, and it's two centimeters deep. So instead of having just like your length and width, we're going to have the length, width, and the height of your cube. So here I'm saying each side is two centimeters long. So we can look at all six faces as being the same area for each face. So that's what we do here. We're going to have one square. So we're going to find the area of one square and we're going to multiply it by six because that's how many sides we have. We have six sides or six faces. So the area of that one square is just going to be two centimeters multiplied by two centimeters, which is going to give us four centimeters squared. Now we have six sides, so we're going to multiply four centimeters squared by six. Now as six does not have a unit to it because it's just like a count, we're just going to count up the sides, just like we did with our triangles from last lesson. So we're going to have four multiplied by six, and we're going to just move our units off to the side here for a second. So we got four times six is going to be 24. So that's going to give us 24 centimeters squared. We're going to bring the units back in, and that's going to be our surface area. So we can look at this cube a couple ways. We can count up the sides and we can calculate each side of engine and add them together. Or we can do what we call the net. So making the net of a shape is very helpful for surface area. So the net is pretty much breaking down a three-dimensional shape into just its edge pieces. So we're going to ignore everything that's inside this cube. And we're just going to break it down to the edge pieces. So it's kind of like if you have a cardboard box and you're just going to cut it up into the sides. So when you think about this as having your box and you're going to fold it over by one. And that first side that's on the ground is going to stick to the ground. So that's going to be our side one here. And as we fold the box over, now side two hits the ground. It's going to stick. And fold over one more time. Side three hits the ground. One more time, side four hits the ground. And now we just have our four our fourth side and our two sides sticking up. And we're gonna place those two sides fold out. And this is gonna give us our square. So a cool way to do this is we can actually do this by hand. So I'll give you a second to pause the video here if you'd like, and you can just cut up this shape that I've drawn down here out of paper, and you can fold it up. And if you fold it up, and then kind of roll it, it will make a square or a cube. Sorry, a box or a cube. Um, so by breaking down the shape into this net, it's easier to see the pieces. 
So we could break this down into different shapes as well. We could say, okay, this is going to be one rectangle here. So I'm going to have two centimeters uh, tall. I'm going to have two, four, six centimeters wide. And that's going to be one of my rectangles. And I'm going to have another rectangle this way. I'm going to have two across and two, four, six down. So that would give me an area of 12 centimeters for this part and 12 centimeters for this part or centimeters squared, sorry. My bad, 12 centimeters squared for my first rectangle and 12 centimeters squared for my next rectangle. If I add them together, I'm gonna to get the same 24 centimeters squared. So there's a couple of different ways to do it. So let's look at more, maybe a more complex shape than a cube. So we're gonna look at a pyramid. To be more precise, a square-based pyramid. So, I've given you three steps here on how to solve for the surface area of a shape. Step one, we're going to break it down into a net or draw the net of the shape. So we got the square base on the bottom. So we're going to start by drawing a square. And now we have four equal triangles that are coming out from the base up to the top. So we're just going to fold these triangles down. And that's going to give us the four triangles here. If you can see the mouse cursor. So part two, or step two, we're going to break it down to the shapes. So here I'm going to add my lengths to it. So I have my square, where I'm told that my base of my square is nine meters by nine meters. So I got a square that's nine meters by nine meters. And I have a triangle. Now, there's a, you'll have a couple different measurements on a pyramid occasionally. You'll have your base, and you'll have your side height here. The side height is going to be from, if you go like along the side of a pyramid on an angle, it's going to be how far that distance is. You can also get the height of a pyramid, which is going to be from the absolute center of the base, so like here, up to the point. This height isn't very necessary for making surface area, but will come necessary for uh, finding the volume of a pyramid. Uh, but for now, we won't look at that. We're going to look at the side height, so the slanted height on this triangle. Okay, that's going to be the height of our triangle. So we got a base plus four triangles. So these four triangles are going to have a base of nine meters and a height of 14 meters. I didn't draw that very clearly, but it was 14 meters. So Step three, we can solve for this. So we're going to look at the area of the triangles. So it's base times our side height divided by two. And we're going to multiply that by four because we have four of these triangles. So putting in our values, we got nine meters multiplied by 14 meters divided by two. So a couple ways to do this. Um, I'm I look at the most, the easiest number to divide by two, which would be 14, is going to give me seven. So this is going to be like nine meters multiplied by seven meters. I'm dividing 14 by two. You can also just plug this whole thing into your calculator, up to you how you want to do it. Um, but this is going to give me nine times seven meters, or nine meters times seven meters, and then we're going to multiply it by four, because we have four triangles still. So this is going to give me 63 meters squared for one of my triangles, and then I'm going to multiply it by four to get all four of my triangles, which is going to give me 252 meters squared. It's going to be my total surface area of my four triangles. Next, so let's look at my area of my square, which is going to be my length times my width, because these are the same values, it's just nine meters multiplied by nine meters, or nine squared, and this is going to give me 81 meters squared. So those are my areas. Now to get my surface area, I'm going to add these values together. So I got 252 meters squared plus 81 meters squared, which is going to give me a total surface area for my pyramid of 333 meters squared. So that's all my surface area. Some questions might be tricky and say, 
what is the visual visible surface area of my pyramid? So if you had this pyramid on the ground, you wouldn't be able to see that bottom area of that tri of the square. You'd just see your triangles. So if you're looking at just the visual, like the air surface area we can see from maybe say like a bird's eye view, or from like the sides, then we'd have just our triangles. Or if our pyramid did not have a floor, let's say that the square was just not there, we would just ignore that square as well. So there's a couple ways that they might word the problem where you have to look at what part of the shape is visible or maybe does it not have a top or does it not have a bottom. So a couple of things to think about when you do your surface area. Okay, so that was doing the air surface area pyramid by breaking down the shape into shapes that we can see. We can also use your formula sheet. So if we quickly move over to the NETS page that I have here, which is going to be your formula sheet, we can look at this square base pyramid. And we can see that we have, I zoom in, we have the area of a triangle, which is going to be base times side height here, divided by two, and the area of the base, which is going to be our base times our base. Uh, or length V squared. So we pretty much recreated this equation here for the surface area where we had our area of our four triangles. So here we have a two times base times side length. The two comes from four being multiplied by this one half. So we're just taking half of four, which would be two. So this is going to be the area of our four triangles plus the area of the base. So this is what we just did. We created this formula by breaking down the shape, but we can also just use this formula. So that's what we'll work on in part two. We'll look at how to use these formulas a bit more. So if we look back to this, so here I just break down the area of the triangle. So it's base times the side length multiplied by two or divided by two multiplied by four. And we can transfer that divided by two onto the four, which this is going to give us base times sine length multiplied by four divided by two, which is going to give us two. So that first part of that equation is going to be our area of our triangle. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the second part is going to be our area of the square, which we take the length times the width, where the length and the width is both, is both the base length times the base length, which is going to give us the base, le base length squared. So again, we recreated this formula by breaking the shape down into the net. Both things are important to be able to do, to break the shape down to the net, as well as use the formula. So questions will ask you to do multiple things. One, some might just ask you just use the formula, some might ask you to break it down. Some shapes we won't have a formula for, so we need to break it down. So that concludes the lesson. I want to keep this one maybe a bit short. Uh, and I only have two problems for you to do, as well as uh, mini assignment, I guess, to go along with these two problems. So I'll get you to do problems 1A and 2 from the workbook. In this time in Google Classroom, I'll give you the page number as well as I want you to uh, create a net for a cone. So here we created the net for surface area, or I mean, sorry, for a pyramid, but I would like you to create the net for a cone. And instead of just drawing it out and leaving it drawn out, I want you to draw it out and then cut it out and recreate a cone, a three-dimensional cone from two-dimensional paper. So I'll have more detail on this on the Google Classroom assignment. So please look there. Uh, this will help for next class's lesson today. Hope you all have a great day. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, I think this is coming out on Friday. If not, I am wrong. Um, and I will see you all on Tuesdays.
uh, video call. 